negotiation support at the bottom. And we already um, started that with uh, moving out the language handling support from locale module to a module named language module. So Drupal 8 does already have a module called language module. And all it does right now is that it, it lets you maintain the list of languages you have on your site. And that's what it does. And it will also get the negotiation code from the locale module. And if with the language module enabled, what it means basically you can have a list of languages configured and you will be able to assign language to stuff like entities and like configuration. So this is basically allows you to tag stuff with language and to specify what languages you have on your site. And then we have three different um, silos uh, in Drupal for language support that we consider. Uh, first is the interface language, um, which is kind of interesting for us because, or which is special for us because it always starts from English and it's built in, in the software and it ships with the software and we can pre-translate that for you and we can ship that to you and there's a standard format for shipping that language information to you, et cetera. So it's a, it's a very well explored field that we have a lot of solutions for. Uh, we have, the second silo is content, uh, which um, is basically um, synonymous for entities in uh, Drupal 8 for our plan, um, which in Drupal 7 already has two models of language support, which we'll get into later. And we wanna uh, make that simpler and uh, make it a single model for everyone to be able to use. And then we have configuration, uh, which is a separate silo for us. Um, and that's a whole new system in, in Drupal 8 that was never in core before. And that's a whole new approach to how we store configuration and stage configuration and deploy configuration. And it's entirely different from the system in core for handling content language and translation and for handling interface translation. So um, on one side, uh, it, this looks like a very nice model because we have um, a lot of pre -rec pre um, pre uh, previous experience with interface language. Uh, we have a lot of previous experience with content language and we want to scale back on that area, in fact, uh, mostly, and we want to move forward a bit, but we also want to scale back a lot. Um, and for configuration, we need to explore that area a lot. But it's also scary because we have three silos to implement language support for, right? So it's three very different systems. Uh, for interface, we start with uh, English and we can pre-translate it and we have formats to ship it with. For content, we have fields and entities and that, um, that system. And for configuration, we don't have fields and entities and, and nothing like that. We have those file-based file uh, API-driven configuration areas. So these are three very different um, areas that we are planning to tackle uh, one by one. And then uh, we do not plan to provide any like unified interface to here you can translate at the same time your interface and configuration and content. We we'll leave that for contrib. Um, it would be, it, it, it's, de it's definitely not hard to unify these, um, but we need to implement that level of support for each of them for contrib to be able to unify. And then based on top of all these, we wanna um, have a more capable display system than we have right now, which can pick different uh, content language and different configuration language. <clears throat> So there's a lot of stuff to do there. Uh, so let's start with the language list management. Uh, so as I've said, we already uh, get started with that in Drupal 8. We, we removed the language management from locale module and created a new module called language module. And now all language management is right there. And, uh, and we greatly simplified the user interface for that area. So you only need to specify a few properties of your languages. And we are adding a few special languages to Drupal 8 uh, for you to be able to more granularly tell what, what your content is about or what your configuration is about. So in Drupal 7, we've had by default built in Drupal core, we've had English and none. So when you created uh, content, uh, you could assign English and none after you've enabled the locale module. Uh, and if you've added more languages, then more languages became available and you could not uh, get rid of English and you could not get rid of none. 
and there was IAT NAND module that let you uh, work around this problem. So in Drupal 8, we've already made English optional. So you can delete English, you can remove English from your website. That is not possible to assign to any uh, content anymore. It will not remove the built-in user interface. Uh, we've added a new language called system language that is the built-in user interface language. Uh, part of the reason we don't call that English is because English is like German. It can be any number of different versions of it, right? So another feature we built into Drupal core is that now you can translate from the system language to English your user interface. So you can translate to Drupal to English to your English that you want to use on your website. And it's built into Drupal 8 already. You're not obligated to do so, it's an option. Uh, it's not turned on by default. So there's no performance uh, penalties with that. And we've added, uh, or we are adding uh, three uh, special languages, uh, not specified, not applicable, and multiple. Uh, and these three uh, basically replace what was in Drupal 7, none. Because none uh, is, uh, can mean different things. And we used it for different things in Drupal 7. So if you save a path alias in Drupal 7 and you say it applies to language none, then it actually applies to all languages, multiple languages at once. If you save um, a field as language none, then it can either mean you don't know the language or it means uh, you, um, it's, it does not have any linguistic content. So we're adding three uh, versions of uh, special languages that you will be able to assign. These are already added in code and we are working on the user interface and the workflows so you can assign these languages to your content. So if you don't know the language of the content, you can say not specified. If you know that the content does not have any linguistic information, it's a picture of a cat or it's a number that's the price of a hockey ball, I don't know, then it's not applicable. And if it's a PDF file that contains um, a user manual for your MP3 player and it's in five languages, then it's multiple. Yes. It's, yeah, so the question was whether it applies on the entity level or the field level or it's just theoretical. The, the level that we've added these right now is just like we made these available as constants and we are working on how you can apply these. And we're working on, or we are discussing two different approaches. One is to actually add these as languages on your system so you can enable them, disable them, remove them if you don't want to see them, et cetera. And the other is to add them as like special language additions that are added by alter hooks and other fun stuff uh, whenever applicable. And then how granularly you make that configurable, we have a different issue for that that would allow you for saying that this type of node can never be submitted um, without a language assigned and then you would not be uh, allowed to submit it with not applicable or not specified. So, these are like uh, more granular special cases for what we have none in Drupal 7 for. And we, I realize we do need um, some heavy documentation for this, so it's clear for everybody. I hope the three examples I provided you are kind of uh, understandable. If not, then feel free to ask uh, at the end or just shout. So we are adding some more special languages and we are making English optional so you can remove it and we are making English a uh, translatable language so you can translate Drupal to English and we are adding system language so we can maintain the built-in language as something um, of an information. So for interface translation, we, uh, so far our working model is that we wanna keep the system that we use in locale model in Drupal 7. So we wanna keep using the uh, get text system for exchange of translation information. We wanna keep using the T function for languages. The main so there, there's a lot of ideas and debate on improving that and moving forward in the area. The main reason for this is that we have a working uh, system for this all around and we don't have working systems for content in different aspects and we don't have a working system at all for configuration. So we have much more problem, much bigger problems in the other areas and we have a kind of ready tools for this. So 
Um, so what we, how we approach this right now is that we uh, keep with the, assum the ass assumptions that we had that English comes from source code, it's always English that comes from source code from, uh, from the software, and it can be pre-translated and deployed uh, from the pre-translation to the websites. And what we wanna build into Drupal core is this system um, that's already available for Drupal 7 uh, with the localization update module. So that we provide a system on localized.drupal.org for translating Drupal to software. It's already happening. Um, and we can pull that, we should be able to pull down eventually the available languages from localized.drupal.org to your site. So you can pick a language from localized.drupal.org on your site when you install Drupal. And we can pull down the translations from localized.drupal.org when you install your site and when you update your modules, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to enjoy this feature right now, in Drupal 6 or Drupal 7, look for the localization update module, uh, L10N underscore update uh, in Drupal Contrib. What we are doing is we are building this functionality in piece by piece to Drupal 8. What we have already of this is that we centralized the translation um, files to one directory. So the translation files will not be looked um, under translation folders of every module. Um, everywhere. We centralize that to one directory. So we can feed that directory with our module from localized Drupal.org in the future, and we can import from there uh, um, in the future. So we centralize that, and um, we are working on the rest of the problems here. Um, what we are uh, actively working on from these problems is uh, tracking local overrides. So when you pull down translations from the community, it quite often um, happened that you want something different from the community translations, but you also want to keep your site updated with the community translations for all other stuff. That's also built into the localization update module, and we have a, a fairly well working patch for Drupal 8 of this to be built in, and it's gonna have much nicer features for the import and export functionality as well. Um, so um, if you wanna help out, um, you can find this issue on uh, the DAMI website. We also want to make PO parsing fully buzzword compliant, um, which means all the PSR0 and OOP and PHP 5.3 and every buzzword that you can imagine in uh, Drupal 8. Uh, we started working on that. Um, we, do we are looking at other systems, whether we have a reusable library like Drupal 8 uh, from Symfony for uh, request handling and uh, routing and other stuff. We are looking at all kinds of libraries uh, for this uh, so that we maybe don't, don't need to do it ourselves. We have not yet found a good library that we could use in Drupal core. So our working um, version for now is that we uh, wanna rebuild our own code um, with, uh, more modern, um, with a more modern architecture. And we are working on a user interface for translating uh, interface in your website, which I think most people don't use because it's crap. Um, and we are taking ideas from localized Drupal.org for this, so we unify the experience and you can just seamlessly move between contributing to the community and working on your own website and you don't need to learn two screens. Um, so it's basically a, a table of source string on the left and then a copy button that copies your uh, source string value to the translation, and then a reset uh, button that uh, clears it out to the original value. Uh, very simple. And we, are, we also already fixed um, the uh, problem that we never had support for translating plural strings in Drupal core on the user interface. We did support it if you imported it or exported it, but we never had a user interface for it. We already fixed that in Drupal core, and we are working on making the user interface simpler. Question. I was gonna say, is this view ready for seven, or is this a, a screenshot of anything? This is a mockup for Drupal 8. It's not uh, yet built for Drupal 8. Um, this is not at all hard to build this for Drupal 7 either. It's just a different UI on top of the existing built-in user interface translation system. So uh, this is another thing that we are discussing right now and likely work on uh, this week. Um, so this is interface translation. Uh, in short, again, we wanna keep the existing backend system because it's done and it works, uh, and we have bigger problems elsewhere. 
Uh, we want to modernize and uh, make it fully password compliant in the backend. Um, we want to modernize the interface and we want to build in the localization update so you can pull in from the community and we can simplify this area as much as possible for you. Um, in fact, the, this system was the, was the first uh, that Drupal ever had external formats import and export in core. Um, there was no, um, no others, um, maybe except, uh, yeah, maybe except RSS. Yeah, so RSS and get text import export um, are the only ones that are supported by Drupal Core. Um, so next up is content language and translation. That's our uh, second silo. And what we have there is um, we have a problem with uh, two models of translation. So in uh, Drupal 7, we have two models of translation to work with. One is node translation that has a built-in UI and a built-in API in Drupal Core. It's called the, the content translation model. And it works this way. You have a node, it's, you mark it German, and you want to translate it to English, and you want to translate it to Italian. And it, and it builds two new nodes, and it builds a relation between those nodes. And you want to have an Italian node as well. And we have a parallel system to this uh, for field translation that looks like this. You have a German node, and you don't make copies of the German node for translation, but you make copies of the fields of the node for translation. So you have the body in German, English, and Italian, and you have the title in German, English, and Italian. And for the data that you don't want to translate, like price of this, if this is a product node or photo of this, you don't want to make translatable because it's the same across every language, uh, then you just don't make different copies of them for different languages. So Drupal 7 already has these two models supported. And, um, and you always need to choose which one to use, so both of them are supported. The, the interface for field translation is in contrib, contrib called entity translation module. Um, so if you have that module in your site uh, and the title module to support title translation, then you basically have both systems and you can uh, pick on a, on a content type level and entity level. Um, to use either. Problem with that is that uh, even those who understand these two models have struggles with selecting one or the other, and then the customer comes back and it turns out that you actually should have selected the other one, and uh, it's kind of hard to migrate from one to the other. And, and then there's all those modules uh, like sign up and organic groups and all the other models that work with these entities and nodes, and they either know one model or the other or neither. So the problem with this is that we have too much stuff going on. So we want to uh, simplify this and, and unify this in one system so it's easier to explain for people and it's easier to uh, implement for module developers. So what we arrived at after a lot of debates and discussion is to uh, kill the node translation model altogether, remove it, no more node translation model and extend the field translation model so you can reproduce uh, the node translation model with field translation. So if you can translate any field and any property in a node, so if you can translate this, the publication status, the author name, the assigned menu items, uh, the um, node relationships, whatever, if you can translate all of that in field translation, then you could basically reproduce node translation uh, one to one. You just have the same node ID, uh, but you load it in or display it in different languages. And there you have your different node. And we can support that in workflows, we can support that in permissions, and we can um, move that forward. And modules that don't want to deal with uh, language can support it by default. They just don't care about that. It has different languages supported. It just works with the entity as one and, and, tap, and text to the entity as one, yes. Yeah, so the idea is that uh, you have your workflow states as fields, so fields are translatable. Um, basically, the, the, the problem for us, the, the, the biggest problem for us here is properties. 
like title, like the published uh, flag, uh, the author name, etc. And we have a buff tomorrow, lunchtime, to discuss property translation. Um, so we can make that translatable. So if we solve uh, translating properties in some way, uh, then you can basically replicate anything for any language. And then you can just say that the, this language version of that, so the node ID becomes a number and the language instead of just a number, right? So if you want to support multilingual, then your node IDs are a number and the language. If you don't want to support multilingual, then your node ID is a number. That's it. Um, and you don't need to support two models. And you can, you can scale however you want. So if you want to have a few uh, translatable fields, you can set that up. And later, it turns out you want to translate more fields, then you can set those up too and just move forward. And you don't need to migrate between two different models. And modules don't need to support both models at once. Yes? Yes, the question was, do we plan to load all, uh, all languages at the same time still? I don't have an answer for that. Uh, we, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, I don't think we made any plans to change them, but. I'm Plach. Uh, actually, I'm one of the people that designed the film translation API. Uh, I was saying, uh, when we designed it, uh, catch the current uh, D8 core maintainer, um, which, who is uh, deeply involved in performance issues, um, stress on the fact that we should always have all the languages loaded at one time because this uh, makes it easier to cache everything. And it actually uh, helps to deal with um, multiple languages because uh, uh, when you load an entity and you have multiple languages at the same time, it's easier to support fallback and choose that maybe um, one field is available in one language, another field is not available in that language. So you can pick up fields and mix them from different languages if you need to. And so, uh, yes, basically there is no, at the moment there is no, no plan for removing this uh, support for loading multiple languages at one time. Uh, which concern do you have about this? Keep that in mind. Just feel free to stay here. Feel free to stay here. And don't steal my podium. Uh, so I think we can get the, get to that. This we can get back to that discussion certainly, especially with uh, Catch involved as well, uh, if he's insisting on uh, keeping it all the same. Um, I I don't remember discussing it recently, so we can certainly revisit that. <clears throat> so we want to move to this direction. What we've done already here is uh, we've added language assignment API support to more entity types. So in Drupal 7, you cannot assign language to terms or vocabulary entities. Um, and you kind of have a mixed language support for user entities. And what we've already uh, accomplished in Drupal 8 is that we have API and data storage level support for assigning language to entity, uh, to uh, taxonomy terms, vocabularies, we have users are, can now in Drupal 8 have a separate preferred language for email and site display and the language for their user entity content, which we do not expose on the UI, but if you so wanna be um, that detailed, then you can do that. Um, so we've added support for uh, more, um, more entity types, and I think we covered every entity type that we have in Drupal core. 
uh, so that's kind of nice. We did not add UI for uh, the new uh, things that we added on the API level. So you uh, cannot assign language to taxonomy yet on the UI. Uh, we are working to unify that UI and then um, get that in through a general entity um, system. We'll see how that uh, pans out. But we're working on a, on a, a very good patch for uh, defaulting the language on uh, entities and how to configure that um, for different entity types. Uh, as I've said, our biggest uh, question, I think our biggest um, um, risk uh, in this area is uh, properties to be made translatable. So properties in Drupal 7 really are title, uh, status, author, are really just like single data entries in a column in the database and they are like very lightweight. Um, and they are lightweight because a lot of things are dependent on them. So permissions are dependent on whether it's published and who authored it. And um, the menu uh, item, depend, uh, menu item uh, placement is uh, good for performance when you need to load that node, et cetera. So there's gonna be a lot of debate there to solve it in a performant way. And we are having a buff tomorrow if I have not yet told you about that uh, lunchtime uh, about this topic. So look at the buff schedule and if you wanna get involved, uh, lunchtime is the right time. Uh, we are also working on language, uh, language assignment and translation UI for this. The language assignment issue is already very hot and it's being worked on. And the translation UI, we just had a buff lunchtime, so you are already, um, you already missed that, um, to discuss the translation UX for uh, Drupal 8 and to improve the Drupal 7 translation UX in the entity translation module um, for this. Um, so uh, there's a lot of discussions on how to improve this and uh, get a better solution. And we do have a uh, solution for a migration path from the node set solution in the Drupal 7 entity translation module. We of course need to solve uh, it for the rest of the entity types uh, where language might be assigned somehow and uh, for the uh, properties and all those things that are not yet supported. Uh, so that was content. Again, um, the content language silo is basically, our problem is we have too much in there we have two models of translation and we want to have one model which works um, by default. If you don't care about language, it works right away. You don't need to care about language if you don't want to. And if you do care about language, uh, then it's just one system to, uh, to develop for and it's just one system for the site builder to, uh, gra uh, to uh, granularly um, get into. So that was content. And then we have uh, configuration language and translation. And this is a big open question. And I've had this session in London and what I've said there is that this is a big open question. Uh, so we did not make a lot of progress in this area. We do have uh, some discussions and plans um, laid out on this node on Drupal.org and we do have a buff about this uh, on Thursday uh, at the same time as the keynote um, so we are not being too polite for the keynote, but we want to solve this for you and we want, to, I want all of you to be there to uh, solve it with us. So we are having a buff uh, Thursday at the keynote time to discuss the configuration language and translation support. That's going to be very interesting. And finally, the, the higher layer was uh, display. So we do have some support for um, picking a language for your interface depending on user preferences and all kinds of other things and that's pretty nice. Uh, what Drupal Core lacks is uh, display support for content. So like the num number one request maybe I get is I enabled multi multilingual support and my front page still shows nodes in every language. But I enabled multilingual support. And I'm like, yes, well, Drupal does not really do that in its listings. There's no multilingual support in listings. So grab views and then you'll be able to configure it there. So Drupal Core does not have uh, display language filtering support for lists and other things. And we need to solve this in, in a more generic way and there's multiple discussions going on in here but this is not a well explored area yet so we need to uh, expand on, on, uh, on here a lot. So if you wanna get involved in, in all these things then uh, this is again the sprint um, we are holding on Friday in this venue and then we are holding on Saturday and Sunday uh, at an off-site venue. Actually, the Saturday sprint venue is different from the Sunday sprint venue as well. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. 
Uh, so this is uh, where you can sign up for the weekend sprints. If you are coming for Friday, just come along. Um, if you're coming, if you want to come for Saturday, Sunday, you need to sign up. And this is the URL to track the progress of the initiative. And we should be open for questions now. If there are any left. Yes, please walk up to the mic. You can, you, can you walk up to the mic? That would be best. Is it on? I okay, hope so. Thanks. One of the things you meant, I got two questions. Number one, you mentioned uh, language of multiple, yep. which kind of, I don't know, uh, keyed something for me. Is this just going to be a, a, a generic multiple, or when you say multiple, will you specify the languages that it's in? Like you, you mentioned English, German, and Spanish, I think. I don't want it to show up in other languages, but I want it to show up in those three. Yeah, so this multiple that we were introducing is you cannot act, so it's like, it's not for specifying a list of languages. So what we have uh, for language assignment in any place in Drupal is you can assign one language to one thing. And a thing can be granular. So if you have a thing that's an entity and that's in relation to something else, and then, um, there's multiple entities that are related in different languages, then you can basically achieve that, or there's multiple, uh, or you assign multiple languages to the relation, you can do that, but not, this multiple is not for that. This is for, a, this is a generic multiple of, I cannot specify one language because it's multiples. Okay. I'll have to read more about that. Uh, the second one was you mentioned um, the PO files and how you were looking for I think you, you said something like you were looking for a way to, to do this, um, to work with PO files and have a, a, a I don't know, a, a, maybe a standard method with working for them. Have you looked at XLIF and all that's going on there? I know that all the translation vendors, the commercial vendors are supporting XLIF and they're open source tools to do translations using XLIF. Yes, I do built the first version of the XLIF module for for Drupal oh, Core. Okay. It was taken over from me um, uh, sometime after that, but uh, yes. I did look at XLIF um, and the tools I've looked at usually supported either uh, cross uh, migration from, or cross uh, conversion from XLIF to POs, um, if the data structure is simple enough, uh, or supported PO as well as XLIF. Um, as I've said, we do have a lot more problems and architectural issues around the configuration and the content area. So we don't want to rebuild this uh, distribution system and translation infrastructure for interface translation. So we want to leave that kind of alone. But XLIF uh, could be used all across for uh, as a, like a generic translation distribution method for content and for interface uh, on top of this layer. But there's the translation management module that basically uh, unifies this into one uh, workflow system, and then it, that it connects you with, can connect you with outside translation providers and workflows and rules and all those things. So you can build in, uh, built in, uh, you can build all these into a workflow. And it has XLIF support. And it does have XLIF support as well. Yes. So, we, so what we are building is, we basically have so, so the problem that we are trying to solve in Drupal eight is we want to build multilingual support on the layers of Drupal core so that everybody else needs to build on top of that. What we have in Drupal 7 is that IETN tries to inject stuff from the outside and entity translation tries to inject stuff from the outside. It like um, tries to support you to have your German version published but not your English version and that kind of thing. But the rest of the system does not understand that or or oftentimes does not understand that. And IATNN does the same. It like tries to inject configuration translation somehow into the system. But a lot of places, the system does not understand that's going on. Um, so instead of like injecting it from the outside, what we are trying is to build stuff in. And if we have this layer uh, built, uh, then these advanced tools can build on top of that. But we are not looking at into building advanced tools yet because we don't, don't have a good solution for the for the underlying system. Um, hopefully, this is not too involved a question. Uh, this is an ambitious project, an ambitious initiative for Drupal 8, as many of them are. Are there 
uh, ways that you have in mind already that the community can, what well, paths for joining the effort and contributing and taking some of the load? And uh, to put that a little bit in context, full disclosure, I'm also part of the LearnDrupal.org initiative, the Boston Initiative, as, as you've been you've you've been invited to, as well. So, you know, just to put that out there. Yes, that was a good prompt. Uh, so actually, I'm also involved with a BAF uh, for the Boston Initiative that is, I think, tomorrow, uh, right? It is tomorrow. So the Boston Initiative is about building a ladder, a ladder of uh, tasks that, that people can come in uh, green, like whole new to the community, and then start with some simple tasks and then learn and then improve with working on more, more and more complex tasks. And we're going to have a buff tomorrow to try and map this work to the uh, Boston Initiative letter. Um, so to build out these uh, tasks and um, build out some tasks and help, help uh, get people on board. And um, I also have, so the DHMI tool that I have on my site uh, which is not on Drupal.org because it required a whole um, whole system of um, of building content. So this is the uh, uh, the HMI link that I uh, provided you uh, twice. It has a current top priority tasks page. If you go to, it basically displays what we consider current top priority to work on. And this has things that I mentioned. This like provide more flexible settings for uh, initial language on content types, make get XPO parsing um, its own uh, abstracted functionality. This is the buzzword compliance thing. Um, add generic field property getter setters. This is property uh, translation related. Let users assign language not applicable language multiple. That's what I've uh, said right now. So the things that I'm talking about are broken down to issues and are being worked on by uh, fine people. And, it, and all of them need more people to work on, right? So most of them are to do in the to-do column. And, um, and there's a lot of uh, things in focus right now, of course. And if you look at all the tasks that we have tagged for the HMI, it's like, well, it's kind of, uh, that was all the stuff we had, and this is all the stuff we've already accomplished. And these are all the people who helped accomplish that. So be part of them. If you are a big name in this list, then you get jobs better, I can tell you. Yeah. Hi. Um, so I had a question around uh, not just translation, but the locales themselves. So uh, a site like Wikipedia, it makes sense for each article to be translated into multiple languages. Um, but what about content that's really only relevant, not to a particular language, but to a country or a region? And then when you have, say, in Canada, you have French and English, mm -hmm. but it's really Canadian content that can be translated twice. Um, I know you could probably hack it by creating separate languages for each region, so Argentinian, Spanish, and Argent uh, Chilean, right? Um, but that's not really about the language, it's more about the region is, is that a separate module or, or is, that, is that what locale is for? Yes, we do not currently work on that problem. Uh, so the question was there's languages and there's locales. Like if you want to post something in French, uh, you might want to target that at, at France or you want to target that at Canada or somewhere else French. Um, and we do not currently work on that problem. There is an issue among the sea of issues here that uh, that has uh, numerous people interested in that. Um, I will not be able to find it for you, but. Or I might, uh, yeah, no, that's not the one. So you can, you can likely find it somehow. Yeah, separate language and locale, proper language for, uh, kind of, no, that's not the one. I don't know. There's, uh, there's at least one issue here uh, to, to uh, work on that. Um, 
it did not get a lot of uh, developer momentum, unfortunately. So I think what, so what a lot of people do is they hack languages right now for this. Um, what you can also do is use fields for location and then build, in, build views to filter by fields. So you can have like French content and then the field tells you that it's for, for France. And then the, a combination of the field for location and the data for language uh, provides you the information to target it proper. Yes. So I have a question about um, translation project maintainers. What does this mean for them? Translation? Like project, translation project maintainers on LDDO. What does it mean for those people? Does it mean By what do you mean translation project maintainers? Where, how? Like people that manage like specific language translations? Does it mean anything for them? Or on localized Drupal.org or in your projects for your clients or where? No, localized. Okay. Uh, it, I don't think it means anything for them. So, so what we so are... So pretty much we can ignore it until we're ready? Yeah, looks like it, yeah. Okay. So for, for, for translation project maintainers on localized Drupal.org, basically this is the Drupal 7 thing and this is the Drupal 8 thing. So we, what we are trying is basically to... Uh, to, um, to separate the interface translation to its own thing and build in the, uh, the localization update module so that people will be uh, fed with your work from localized Drupal.org. But we do not plan to like blow up this area because of our work in these other two areas that we are uh, very much lagging behind. Hi, um, could you expound a little bit more upon um what would be going on in use, the usage of .po files, um, and maybe also as a side question, just what the motivation is for that format, as opposed to, um, like I know in Symfony 2, they don't use .po files, they use uh, YAML and I think two other type of file types that they allow for with their uh, translator, I think it's a translator component, or tra translation component, so I was just sort of wondering, you know, what's, what's the motivation there and how are, you know, are we talking about implementing this for Drupal? Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about that a lot and I wanted to talk about uh, that with Greg today, but I, I did not manage to do that. So, um, so a lot of, the, lot of the momentum behind Drupal right now is to try and uh, get standard solutions for things like PSR0 for placing classes and like Symfony for, uh, for, a, uh, for, a, for a request handling system and et cetera, et cetera. And um, what's fun about our initiative is that we, for years we have a standard solution because get text is a standard unlike YAML's use for, for translation. So I think um, in this case, uh, Symfony goes its own way and we are going the standard way uh, with uh, tools available for editing those PO files and, and spell checking them and merging them and, and making stats of them, et cetera. So there's a lot of tools uh, built there uh, that we can leverage um, in, in the market as a whole, not in Drupal, but in the market as a whole. And we also built a lot of tools in Drupal, uh, that's true. Um, so I think in this case, uh, it's, it makes a lot of sense to keep this. However, if you've been to Greg's session, he also said that Drupal 8 will either have entities which are content or uh, CMI data, which is configuration. So the question is, where is actually this interface translation is stored in Drupal? Uh, so it kind of would look awkward if you take a PO file from localized Drupal.org, you import it uh, to a CMI XML representation, and you deploy that to your site and maintain that in the XML thing, and then you can export it to PO file again. Uh, so that would look awkward. Um, so if we want to go the whole way, then we might actually uh, drop PO files altogether and use the CMI XML thing and just use that for deployment and, and distribution and everything. But uh, the whole push for Drupal 8 is to use standardized components and things that prove themselves in the world and things that have tools already. And for us, this is, this is the area where we already have that. So I don't see a good reason to move forward, although I see the problem with uh, this internal representation. So it, it kind of comes back to having the get text editors available for people writing content and translating? 
We are not do so. We are not doing get text for content. Okay. Um, the uh, if you use the translation management thing, I think it integrates with Xlib. It will not export your content in in a get text. I don't think. Uh, of course, it's pluggable, so you can write a get text import okay. export tool. But Xlib is the uh, is the absolute accepted standard in the area. We're talking about translation all the time, but localization is sometimes a problem for us. Um, if you have fields like amounts, prices, and so on, the displaying of amounts is in US different from Germany, separated, uh, different. Are there any plans for Drupal 8? We don't have any plans in core. I've seen a, an announcement recently of a module for that in Drupal 7, though. I don't okay. recall the exact name of that. But there's, um, I, I don't recall the name of the person working on it either. Sorry. But, um, but it's being worked on uh, definitely for Drupal 7. Uh, okay. Locale dependent display of prices and, and those kind of things, yes. Cool. If there are no other questions, then thank you.